Okay, so that's that. Okay, um, now for something completely different. Um, I'm going to be talking, I'm going to give you an overview of, that's not it. That's, is that it? No, that's not it. How do I advance? This one. That's the one that's not marked. Okay. <laughs> So I want to give an overview, kind of my bottom line. So if any of you want to kind of um, zone out before lunch, I'll just give you this one slide and then you can not listen to the rest. So um, I'm going to be talking about um, treatments for depression in youth and what, what we know. We know that there are basically fairly small effect sizes. Um, and we know that we're doing some things well, but we still have room to grow. So. Um, what I've been interested in is trying to look at what are the developmental demands of the things we're trying to ask kids to do in therapy. Um, so what skills are needed to participate, and I'm mainly talking about cognitive therapy at this point. Um, so what we did is we outlined uh, various components of cognitive therapy, and then we try to identify corresponding developmental abilities. Um, and then we've tested whether children's ability levels predict learning. Um, and we've focused on various uh, cognitive skills. I'm going to talk today about just the results from looking at scientific reasoning. We've also looked at metacognition, and we're now starting to look at theory of mind and perspective taking. Um, so, um, so the results, the bottom line is uh, higher levels of reasoning, reasoning ability predicted learning um, cognitive therapy skills. And this was over and above age and IQ, which is that's the important part. Uh, both immediately and then uh, a week later. So there was some retention. Um, and we also found that scientific reasoning moderated the effects of uh, homework performance uh, on learning. Um, so then I want to talk about the implications of this for what do we do with this if we're in the, in the uh, clinic and we actually have a child in front of us. Um, so this is just a brief um, overview of a table that we have. It's in a, um, a paper, uh, a much longer table. We've reviewed 24 manuals uh, for treating depression in youth, and we identified a list of over 100 techniques used in cognitive therapy. Just as an aside, what people call cognitive therapy is not the same thing. Um, there's cognitive therapy, then there's cognitive therapy. And so everyone's not doing the same thing, even though they say they are. Um, and we tried to match these various techniques with different developmental abilities. And this included not only a range of cognitive abilities, uh, but also uh, social and emotional development. Um, and so what I'm going to just talk about is just a little bit of the work that we've been doing on scientific reasoning. Um, just before that, I just want to say something about age and development. Uh, they're not the same. Um, there's a a uh, distinction between them, although some studies have found differences in response to treatment as a function of age, uh, studies have not really tested developmental level. You know, we know that age can be a marker for a range of things. Therefore, whoops, I'm, I'm flipping, but I'm, you're not. Um, <laughs> so the question that we asked were, uh, does the level of cognitive development predict learning of cognitive therapy skills over and above age and IQ? And then secondly, does cognitive development moderate the relation between doing their homework um, over the week and retained learning? OK. So um, we had 213 children um, ages 9 to 16 recruited through local schools. Um, and importantly, um, when you want to figure out whether kids are learning, you have to have a way to measure that. Uh, so we created a measure. Uh, we called it the knots, which was knowledge of therapy skills. Um, these are my graduate students. They were very clever. Um, so we, this assesses knowledge of co the cognitive model, uh, cognitive distortions, restructuring. We use multiple choice and open-ended questions. And we have multiple forms because we gave it several times. Um, so in this first session, we had. Um, 54 different groups of four to six children at a time. Uh, we assessed their cognitive development, which was measures of scientific reasoning. We also looked at metacognition. We assessed knowledge of the cognitive therapy skills with one version of the knots. And then we did 
For half, the, half of them, we did the teaching cognitive therapy skills, which was based on the Penn Resiliency Program, which is Jane Gillum's work. Um, we counterbal counterbalanced the order, so some of them got the training and then got the testing, and then some of them got the testing and, some, and then got the training, and we counterbalanced that and found that there was, a, there was an effect of the training uh, apart from just retaking the test. Um, and then in session two, we followed up a, a week later where we redid the knots. Um, and uh, collected their completed homework. Uh, just a comment about scientific reasoning, why do we care about that? It's basically systematically testing predictions by using evidence to examine theories and drawing conclusions based on um, examination of data. And a lot of this comes out of Kuhn uh, 2002 and, and other work. We use measures of um, Scientific reasoning and control of variable strategy, I won't get, go into detail about those. Um, and just if you're curious, where are, where are these kids developmentally? You know, wh when does this uh, develop? It, it develops during middle school, but there's a great amount of variability, and I think that's one of the important points, which is that, yes, you can have a child who's 10 years old, but a 10-year-old is not the same as another 10-year-old with regard to the things that, they're, um, that they need to know. Um, and reasoning ability, we can talk about this more, but it's related to the kinds of things we do in cognitive therapy, which is examining evidence, generating alternatives, modifying beliefs based on the examination of evidence. So it's very relevant um, to what we're trying to teach them. Um, so what did we find? Come back. Um, more advanced scientific reasoning, um, uh, controlling for agent IQ significantly predicted greater post-teaching knowledge across several of the subscales. I didn't go into details about the subscales and the knots, but it shows that the various subscales did um, it did predict. So what that means is, if you have a child who has higher reasoning ability, they're going to be able to understand and learn the cognitive therapy better. Lo and behold, but again, it's over and above age. Um, so the implications for that clinically, I'll talk about in a second. And then they also showed greater retention um, a week later. Uh, we also found a moderating effect. So scientific reasoning moderated the relation between homework performance and learning, con again, controlling for age and IQ. And our simple slope analyses um, uh, for all the significant interactions. So for children who were low in scientific reasoning, um, better homework performance predicted significant increases. So the kids that were started low, if they did their homework and they did it well, they uh, got more knowledge. Whereas um, the kids who were already high, the homework didn't seem to matter as much. And then also for uh, children who were low on homework performance, higher levels of scientific reasoning predicted significant increases. Um, whereas uh, individuals high on homework performance level of scientific reasoning was not significantly um, different. So to summarize, um, more advanced cognitive development, at least as we measured it, was developed, was related to increases in knowledge of cognitive therapy skills uh, immediately after teaching and at follow-up. Um, age may be a less precise proxy uh, of development, and we may do better if we actually measure th these things. Um, and that um, homework uh, matters, practice matters. Uh, for the children who are less cognitive development, doing homework accurately uh, may actually facilitate their retention of learning and improving adherence to homework uh, may help these kids. So one last slide, um, what are the clinical implications of this? Um, once, um, once clinicians have assessed a child's cognitive development prior to treatment or during treatment, what's next? Um, then what? So the question is, do we change the treatment to fit the child? Do we change the child to fit the treatment? Or do some, some combination of both of them? So one of the things that we've been thinking about is, OK, so how would you modify the intervention to fit the child's current level? For example, if the child doesn't have certain kind of cognitive skills, well, then you don't try to teach those techniques. Maybe you do more behavioral work with them. That's one approach. However, if we're trying to get them um, you know, just to learn something, there also may be a way to enhance the child's developmental skills 
uh, that they can more fully engage in. Uh, for example, there are programs for enhancing metacognition or for enhancing theory of mind. So what we're thinking is, is if we do this um, and in the context of cognitive therapy, um, do those kids do better uh, overall in terms of learning as well as reducing their depression? Um, and then finally, the future directions that we're uh, interested in is uh, Looking more at metacognition, social perspective taking, as I said, theory of mind, which I'm very interested in, um, cognitive flexibility, emotion understanding, these are some of the areas that I think can be studied. Um, and